What's going on guys? Sunny aka The Random Recorder here. So today, I want to go ahead and do my personal predictions for Smash Bros. DLC. Now, for those of you who don't know, obviously Smash Bros. is coming out for the Nintendo Switch and there are four remaining fighters on the DLC or at least the first wave of DLC because we don't actually know if there uh, is going to be another wave in the future, though part of me su- su- though part of me suspects there might be another wave of DLC in the future. But right now we're talking about the first challenger pack. Now, within this challenger pack, the first character has been revealed to be Joker from Persona 5 and we don't know anything about the other four fighters. Now, I recently made a Nintendo E3 predictions uh, video which you can find in the iCard in the top right corner now and in that video I talked about how there was most likely going to be some kind of Smash Bros character reveal at the presentation possibly a dual reveal and today I'm going to be going over who I think uh, some of those characters may be now before I get into this I want to be clear and say that I'm not going to be listing very very specific characters I'm going to be going uh, a little bit general, so you'll you'll get what I you'll get what I mean when I get into the first character. Now, the first uh, character that I I think will be in, and that I think has a good shot of getting in, is an Xbox representative. And hopefully, you understand what I mean. Uh, I'm not being very specific with who I think it is. I think it'll be some Xbox you know representative. It could be Steve from Minecraft, uh, Master Chief, who I think is the most likely pick or Banjo and Kazooie, who's also a likely pick due to general popularity and whatnot. So the reason I think that there's going to be an Xbox representative is, first of all, there's already a Sony representative in Joker, so I think they might as well just go ahead and try to balance things out, get an Xbox representative in there. And the other reason is just because uh, Xbox and Nintendo, they've been working a lot together lately. Um, they ported, they put Minecraft on the Switch, they put Cuphead on the Switch, you know, they did, uh, they even did some cross-play, and uh, just for those kinds of reasons, they've been working together with Nintendo quite a bit, so I think that's how it's going to be. They're going to keep trying to work together, and they're going to put some of the Xbox characters into Smash, and I would absolutely love for that to happen, by the way. I also made a video on my top 10 Smash characters wish list, which you can also find by clicking the iCard right now, um, and yeah. So I think there's a good chance of an Xbox representative. Now, the next one relies on a bit of an inference or a bit of a a weird speculation, I guess you could call it. And it regards um, some of the third-party companies that Nintendo works with. Uh, Typically, you have companies like uh, 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 Capcom, for example, has three reps in, in Mega Man, Ryu, uh, Ken, all three of those guys, Uh, Sega, Uh, has Joker, Bayonetta, and uh, obviously Sonic. And, you know, examples. Basically, most of the third-party developers that have characters in Smash have three, which is kind of interesting. It's like, you know, third-party characters, three characters for third-party, because it's like third-party, like three, and there's like three characters. So anyway... um, I'm just going to um, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, in the next video. Alright, but seriously though, uh, in terms of developers who haven't actually received three reps, you have Square Enix and Bandai Namco, and they're at one representative each. What I find interesting is if you were to get them to three, that's two each, which totals up to exactly four characters, which happens to be the amount remaining on the on the challengers pack. Wait a sec, are we doing complicated math just like last week's video, which you should check out because um, it's really good. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, in terms of representatives for Square Enix and Bandai Namco, there are obviously a plethora of characters for Square. You have um, Cloud's already in, but uh, for example, Noctis from uh, Final Fantasy 15. You could have characters from Kingdom Hearts. Obviously, Sora would be a top pick. He's a highly demanded character. I think Gen- Geno, sorry, from um, Super Mario RPG is a good pick. I don't know if that counts as a Square rep or a Nintendo rep because it is a Mario game, but it was developed by Square, so I'm not sure where he falls. I'm just gonna go ha- go ahead and call him a Square rep. Um, and then in terms for Bandai Namco, there aren't too many things that come to mind. 
uh, they did, they published the Dark Souls games, which uh, could lead to characters getting in through that, but they also made the Tekken series, so most likely its main character, Jin, could make it in to Smash Bros. Now, last but not least, this is something that I think has the lowest possible chance of getting in, and that is a Nintendo representative, a first party representative getting into Smash Bros. And the reason I think this is because I believe it was December 6th, the, the, the night of the Game Awards, 2018, uh, Reggie confirmed, uh, Rick Reggie, by the way, our hearts. Anyway, uh, Reggie confirmed that the people who would be on the Fighters Pass are not exactly who you think they would be. They're not commonly, they're, they're you know, characters from everywhere. And I, I don't remember his exact statements. I'll have it up on screen. Yeah. These are going to be characters that are new to the series just like Joker from Persona 5, yes. characters that you would not anticipate to be in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. We're super excited about this. Yes. The fans can go and they could get the fighters pass to get all of the five fighters that'll be yeah. coming to the series. We're tremendously excited. But um, yeah, he said stuff like, you know, it's not something you're gonna typically associate with Nintendo or something. And obviously one of the first uh, association with Nintendo you can make as a first party character, like a character from Fire Emblem Three Houses or Pokemon, I think were the top two likeliest picks. And so I don't think either of those is going to happen just because again, that's a really quick association and I think they're going to go for more out of the box characters here, like Joker. Again, that's a Sony exclusive IP, right? Nintendo is working with a Sony exclusive IP. That is something that you might not think possible, which is why Master Chief, who is Xbox's, you know, he's their main guy, or a character from Gears of War or Banjo and Kazooie, they're, you know, big Xbox representatives, so they'd be really out of the box picks. And um, I guess technically for the third party developers, it's not as much, but in general, uh, yeah, they're just more out of the box than making a character from Fire Emblem or um, Pokemon or something like that. So those are my personal predictions on who's gonna be the Smash Bros. DLC. If you guys have any ideas or if you guys, you know, um, wanna tell me who you guys think will be the Smash Bros. DLC, make sure to leave a comment. Also, subscribe, hit the notification bell to get uh, notified whenever we upload, and go ahead and hit the like button if you like this video. Uh, Ren Recorders, peace out.